Hello there, it's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee and today what we're going to do is we're going to make a tiny little drawstring bag. Okay, now as in all these things, smaller is harder so, you know, be aware of that when you're designing it and deciding what you want. Now we're only making it so it's long enough to attach on the end of a dog lead so it's got the treats inside and um, a couple of bags for other reasons so this is all this is this is why we're building it and how small it is now so like that we're going to make a circle at the bottom so we've got something to draw around and then we're going to make it come up so we need quite a lot of fabric and we're going to line it so it's going to be reversible as well now I've got wool here, I've got sort of a special non-stretchy wool uh, for the drawstring and I've also managed to get hold of a toggle. That's if you can, if not then, you know, just make do. Okay, so we've got our cloth, we've got scissors, sewing machines and a couple of pins if we need it. I'm going to put them out of the way and let's design the pattern. Now, sellotape is actually brilliant for this. I was thinking about it because it's already got my hem allowance because I can use the inside one as the sewing line and my outside one as my non-hemmy stuff. What I've done is because it's mine and I can get away with it is I've drawn a line there. I'm going to mark it on the cloth and then I'm going to whirl it round and then when I've got to the mark again and then I can end and then I can put my hem allowance on it. Sorry I've got no teeth today. Okay next thing I need to decide is how tall I want it. So this is your option here this is yeah if you want it that tall then one side of your cloth needs to be that height and then it's a simple matter of cutting out lovely a square and then I am going to add a little bit of a hem allowance onto that because I use the outside of the circle rather than try and measure the inside <coughs> And if you were more happy with half an inch hem allowance, then go bigger. If not, we're fine. All right, I'm going to get rid of my scraggy bits. So that's how much cloth we need. So you could get away with getting a fat quarter for this size. But I like people to be able to choose their own size thing. All right, where to start? I think I'm going to place right side to right side and I'm going to join these two together so I'm using a fairly small stitch because the sewing machine likes this fabric and that's fine now this bit's a bit tricky and I could completely understand if you left a bit to sew over uh, when you did your cutting out. All I'm going to do is either side of this line I'm going to hem an inch. That's so that the finished little bag looks super neat. So one inch either side and then that's that part of the sew done. The next part of the sew is I'm going to match up corresponding colours right side to right side. I'm going to leave myself a quarter of an inch hem allowance because that's how much I've given myself and then I'm going to place the circle down and with this hand I'm just going to gently roll the circle round. With the other hand I'm going to steer the circle round. So it's all about hand-eye judgement here and gentle pulling. Now it's nice if you've got a sewing machine that can go slowly because um, some of these push button ones are great because your foot does get tired and um, yeah so on your slowest setting. 
I must admit, for tricky things and tiddly things, I like to use the foot pedal. So if I was to buy a new sewing machine for Christmas, because I do get this asked this a lot, what sewing machine would you buy? I would buy one with the option of both, because some of these modern machines, you put the cloth in the mouth and it goes. And I don't know how well that would work for me on smaller things like little teddy bears. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end now. And what I've got is I've got the end of that strip and I've got the beginning of that strip. So, a couple of reverse stitches in a sort of stationary position. Get back to where I was. I'm going to leave my needle down. My foot's going to go up. <clears throat> and... I'm going to join these together. So all I'm doing is I'm sewing up to that little line of stitches. There we go. A couple of reverse stitches. This is a, ste a seam that's going to get wear, so it's a good idea to just reinforce it slightly. All right. So. It's the same again, although now we've sewn it together, it will be a bit more tricky. So I'm going to place my, my circle and my strip right side to right side. And I'm going to remember that half inch or quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, around I go. depending on the fabric you use, I'm using a very lightweight fabric, so I believe that the hole that I've left to put the string through at the top is enough to turn it all inside out. But if you're on a, a thicker fabric or you want an easy life, then we have to consider leaving a hole to turn it inside out. Now I would leave the hole to turn it inside out on the straight edge, the edge that's going up. This is just because it's so much easier to then sew it together and keep it looking tidy. So down with my needle, adjust my two pieces of fabric so that they join up at the centre and then I'm just going to sew this up. So let's get that lined up. Okay. Now, those of you that are watching intently, um, I was going to switch off the camera and then come back to that, but I didn't think the video would take too long, so I, I didn't worry. Sometimes I'll just do one side as an example. I'm now going to do the other side, although I should have done it straight away. So I'm going to open it out, push the previous seam behind and place the sewing machine down. And of course you can use a pin if you wanted. Okay, so it's not that hard either way, whether you, well, I would recommend you do them both first. So let's get these ends tidied up a bit. And all we need to do now is turn the bag inside out. And you can see that little hole is enough, even though it is just for the drawstrings to go through. So what we should have now is like a tube with um, the end sewn. And we've got our little seamed hole. Okay. So the next part of the make is you need enough of your string to go round at least once and then I'm going to go with twice but at least once, okay? And there we go. Now. We do have a choice and I think personally what's going to be easiest if we get it all set up 
and it's very much entirely up to you I'm going to line up that neatly as well and then I'm going to top stitch a seam along here now this is just to hold the string in place and we have to be careful that we don't have anything tucked under and I'm going to give myself loads and loads of room done is very carefully folded it inside out and then made sure that I'm not catching anything from behind. I have my string here and they do recommend that you use a safety pin so that you've got something to push along. Now I did have that toggle a minute ago didn't I? I have no idea where I lose things. Oh there it is. So we can use this toggle. Now I'm going to push that through there and then I'm going to close it and it is only so that I've got something to grip as I go round. So pushing it closed, I've got two holes there and I can thread this through there or thread a bit through so that it, at least it's held in position. There we go. Okay. Now all I need to do is I need to thread my string through and because I've made it myself and I've made sure that I um, have left myself loads of room. But a safety pin would work really well and uh, I do have my trusty knitting needle here to make a good start. And it's just a matter of pushing it through, teasing it through, following it round. And um, it's all good, all good. So the bag's really taking shape now, this is just the finishing touch and I'm going to start it off with a knitting needle and then obviously once I've got past halfway I'm just going to have to pull it through myself. Okay, so I'm now out the other side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop this, I'm going to tie a knot in it. And then I'm going to pull it through so the knot is right the other side. There we go. And then if I have a little feel around, I can feel this knot here. Now that would work without the toggle. If you can get hold of the toggle, then that's great. And, do you know, I went through a stage where I was early on doing these videos. And I looked for toggles in every shop I went for. And I found none. And I think I must have asked in every shop as well. <laughs> when I'd found some, then every shop had them. So, you know, it's just it's just luck of the draw. Okay, so we now have to re-thread our to toggle. So again, it's like that. And then I'm going to close it so that those two holes are sewing, showing. And then I can just push that through. And it's all brilliant. <laughs> honest, honest, I can do that bit. And there we go. So we've got it right the way through. And all done. So we've got a little bag. And it's perfect for what I need it for. The basic design is like a chalk bag for climbers. So if you do have a friend that climbs as well, then you know you can use that. But basically we're going to hook that over the handle of the dog sleeves and we've got everything that we might possibly need for our dog walk. All right, thank you ever so much for watching. My name's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee. I do daily videos, although at the minute <laughs> it's, it's a bit hard. Um, yeah, so we're having the house rewired. All right, thank you ever so much for watching.